I have so many animals. This is ridiculous. Ah, yeah. So many dogs. So we got two pigs, three dogs, a turtle, ah, and a parrot. That was rude, bro. This video will go over the different animals Logan Paul has had and what happened to them. As you guys know, I love animals. But before we get started, I want to make it clear that one, Logan wasn't the one who left his pig out in a field. More on that in a moment though. I think Logan Paul has improved a lot since he was younger, but I am by no means any kind of fan of him, and today we'll get into a few reasons as to why. In general, he's just not my cup of tea. Ugh. I think Logan means it when he says he loves animals. Oh my god! He's so cute! I... But just because you love animals doesn't mean you're automatically equipped to take care of them, especially when you go out and get multiple different exotic pets without, at the very least, looking into basic facts about the animal you're planning to care for, such as its size. Also, just a heads up, we will be going over some things that might be upsetting to some viewers, such as animal mistreatment and the loss of life. Logan Paul, a very popular YouTuber who started out on Vine with his brother Jake Paul, is no stranger to controversy. In their younger years, the Paul brothers were constantly making headlines for doing obnoxious things like disturbing their neighborhood, and most of us know what Logan Paul was known for back in December of 2017 with the forest incident. Yeah. And this famous line. I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. For quite a while, Logan was highly disliked over the Akigohara forest incidents. He had lost brand deals and professional relationships. YouTube had even stepped in and suspended his monetization for a while, but after some time had passed, he was able to make a fairly successful comeback. In 2018, Logan started the Impulsive podcast, which has since grown a pretty large audience. He definitely seemed to have matured a lot, and it is undeniable that there is a lot of contrast between who he is now versus versus when he was a teenager. Actually, was he even a teenager when all of that happened? Oh, I thought he was much younger than he is. I thought he was like 20. Still, I guess early 20s. He's improved a lot since his early 20s. Again, that doesn't mean that the things he did are completely excusable. It just is nice to see that it seems like he's matured a little bit, but there are still a lot of things that make him not such a great person, at least in my opinion. But for the most part, Logan was able to continue his career without any major stirrups online, at least until recently. First, he received backlash for making fun of his friend for being a Christian, and then he was exposed for his project, CryptoZoo. I'm not going to go over the CryptoZoo situation too much in this video, but I will give a brief explanation on what I know about it at least, for the sake of setting the stage for everything that happened after this. A YouTuber named CoffeeZilla exposed Logan Paul's cryptocurrency game called CryptoZoo, where players would trade NFT images of zoo animals, among other things. CoffeeZilla's video is very detailed, and it showcases how Logan's fans lost a lot of money. Also, apparently the NFT photos were just Adobe stock photos of animals. CoffeeZilla's video did so well that it created a lot of backlash for Logan Paul. So much so that Logan himself made tweets, a response video, discussed it on a podcast, and threatened to sue CoffeeZilla, but also wanted CoffeeZilla to come onto his podcast to discuss it with him. Why would you want to invite somebody you're planning to sue onto your podcast? That could not be good if you're planning to win a potential lawsuit. He was even called out for hiring criminals to help him with this project, and the funny part was he was giving the excuse that he should have had his team vet these people more, while simultaneously criticizing criticizing CoffeeZilla for using those criminals as a source to expose him. Yeah, his original response was really weird, and I totally can't understand why it got the backlash that it did. Logan Paul was dunked on so hard for how bad his response video was that he ended up taking it down. Oh, and his podcast like to dislike ratio is so bad that just looking at it burns my retinas. <laughs> So after all of this, Logan made a response in his Discord server, and shortly after that, he made an apology on his second YouTube channel, even though he dragged CoffeeZilla on his normal YouTube channel. And CoffeeZilla responded to that as well. Also, there is word that Logan Paul and anybody else who worked on the CryptoZoo project is now allegedly getting sued. That seems to wrap this situation up as of right now. However, it seems as though the timing could not have been worse, as another huge issue stirred up in the 
the middle of all of this, but this time involving animal neglect. During all of the commotion regarding the crypto situation, an animal rescue called The Gentle Barn posted a video onto TikTok of a pig named Pearl being rescued after she was found laying in a field beside another pig that had unfortunately passed away. It didn't take long for viewers to figure out that Pearl had once belonged to Logan Paul. Pearl was found alone next to another pig who passed away. She came to us with tattered ears and a potentially life-threatening infection in her uterus that has since been healed. She's clearly been through so much trauma that we can't begin to imagine, but she is now safe with us at the Gentle Barn. From what we have been told, it is believed she was purchased originally from a breeder by an influencer. People often buy mini pigs or teacup pigs for clout online, believing they will stay small. When they inevitably grow very large and have many unexpected needs, they're sadly discarded. While we don't know everything she's been through in her past, we know her life is now filled with friends, nutrition, delicious foods, the highest quality care, and so much love. The thing is, he got two pigs. He got Pearl in 2019, and shortly after he got another pig named Piggy Smalls to keep Pearl company because Logan claimed that Pearl was depressed. Pearl is back here, and she's lonely. And examining Pearl, exhibiting what could be signs of chronic depression. This is not good. We've got another pig for Pearl. Surprise! Got another pig! Then in 2020, Logan moved to Puerto Rico and shared that he would apparently not be able to take his pets, so he decided to rehome them. It was later revealed that the original place he rehomed the pigs to, rehomed the pigs again to someone else. On January 10th, Logan made this response on Twitter where he explained more about the situation. Pearl was rehomed to an amazing ranch that I visited in Santa Clarita when I moved to Puerto Rico. I was unable to bring her to the island. She lived there happily for 10 months before the owner sold the ranch. She was rehomed without my knowledge to a farmer across the street. As far as I know, the farmer called the gentle barn to pick her up and denies that there was a second pig. Pearl was transferred alone. This is an incredibly heartbreaking situation. I had Pearl for two years. I am beyond thankful to the gentle barn for taking her in and I will do whatever I need to aid in Pearl's care. An email from Logan to the gentle barn was also shared through TMZ. Dear Gentle Barn, it was just brought to my attention that a pig I owned nearly two years ago, Pearl, was rescued and rehomed by your organization. With every ounce of gratitude I have, thank you. Pearl lived very happily at my house in Encino for about two years. She was treated like the princess she is, bathed regularly, ate a variety of healthy meals, roamed the yard, and had a shelter and pen of her own. I'd even sleep with her sometimes. You'll come to find she's a very friendly pig and loves to cuddle. When I moved to Puerto Rico in April of 2020, she was unable to come with me, so she was rehomed at a horse ranch in Santa Clarita. From my understanding, she lived fruitfully there for about 10 months until that homeowner moved as well. Pearl was then rehomed to the farmer across the street with the promise of care. I've heard that he called your organization to pick her up. It's shocking and heartbreaking to hear the state she was found. I want to reach out personally and say thank you for taking her in. For what it's worth, I'd love to send a token of gratitude to your organization for taking Pearl in and doing something so kind. I thought she was at a good home, but regardless, she is now and I'd like to contribute to her care again. I can't thank you enough for stepping in. Please let me know how else I can be supportive. So again, just to be clear, Logan Paul claims that he did not give this pig to the person who did this to her. He said he rehomed her to a farm that he trusted, who later rehomed her to a person across the street, who is allegedly the person that did this to her. What concerns and frustrates me, however, is the confusion around this second pig that allegedly passed away. There are accusations of a second pig being found that wasn't alive. You aren't going to question the farmer who allegedly had these pigs, but is now denying there ever being a second pig? I would be freaking out wondering if there really was a second pig and if that pig was mine or once mine before rehoming it. Is there no way to get in contact with the original farm you rehomed the pigs to to find out whether or not Piggy Smalls went to this farm that mistreated Pearl? Is there no way to find out where that pig went just to make sure that he's okay? There has been some debate on this as well. One source claimed that the pigs were rehomed together. It wasn't until I reached out to the pig breed that sold Piggy Smalls and Pearl to Logan that I got some kind of answer for what happened to them. So when I asked them if they knew what happened to Logan's pigs, they basically said that the pigs were still both together and that they were good, but they 
aren't with them. While Logan claims that they weren't, if I'm understanding this correctly. And the other, th the other thing they made a, they made a fuss about was was that they, they said there was a second pig found with Pearl, and I looked into that as well. Pearl was transferred alone. So, so, and and the farmer who I haven't spoken to yet denies any knowing anything about a second pig. And I don't know, I don't know what that is, or or if, if that's even true. But there was there was there was no second pig. Pearl was transferred alone. The only way I can make sense of all of this is if he meant that the place he rehomed the pigs to only rehomed Pearl after the first rehoming. In other words, the second place didn't rehome them together. But as of right now, that remains unclear. Logan also made this tweet a year after having Pearl. I bought Pearl over a year ago. I was told she was a mini pig. She's not. And in the picture, you can see how big she actually is. To me, this makes me wonder if he really did any research before buying these pigs or if this was just an impulsive decision because pigs are cute and he wanted one and it would be good for social media. And apparently any pig that weighs under 350 pounds is considered a mini pig. A lot of blame and responsibility for this situation is being passed around. Is this Logan's fault or is it not? Personally, I don't think it's a black and white issue and I think a lot of things could have been done in many ways to prevent this from ever happening. My biggest issue is that I personally think Logan has a track record of getting animals impulsively without thinking ahead or thinking about any consequences in the future. And listen, I get that sometimes things can come up unexpectedly that can affect a person's ability to care for their beloved pets. In those cases, the most selfless and responsible thing you can do in that situation is rehome them to a trusted environment. That way they get the best quality of life. Even when rehoming your pet in the most responsible and selfless way, it can be really traumatizing. And most people understand this and that's why they don't want to rehome their pets unless it's absolutely necessary because they know how upsetting it will be not just for them, but their pets, but they ultimately make that decision because whatever is going on in their life is preventing them from giving their pet the care that they need, so they're choosing to sacrifice living with their pet in order to give it a better quality of life. And I would imagine that most people would be extremely cautious if they were to ever get another pet after dealing with something like this. But that doesn't seem to be the case with Logan Paul. As we go through this video, you can see that this isn't your normal situation of somebody rehoming their beloved family pet due to an unforeseen circumstance. Logan has a track record of rehoming animals and having things happen to his animals over preventable situations. To be clear, I don't think these issues are done on purpose, but due to their frequency, I do think Logan shows a huge lack of responsibility. We're going to take a look at a list of some of the animals Logan Paul has had, and I just want to warn you that some of this is going to be upsetting. Kong was an adorable Pomeranian Logan had while living in California. The thing about where Logan lived at the time though was that his area was very well known for having coyotes. One night while Logan apparently wasn't home, he received a text from his neighbor claiming that coyotes were outside. Logan then proceeded to tell whoever was at home with the dog so that they can bring Kong inside. But by that time, it was too late. Kong had unfortunately been taken and assumingly eaten by coyotes. Maybe I misunderstood understanding something here, but my interpretation of this is that Logan Paul was explaining that they had just left Kong outside unsupervised at night. Anyways, I'm at dinner later that night. My neighbor Susie texts me and she says, coyote in front, keep Kong inside. And I said, where? And so I, I screenshot this and I send it to my boys who are at home, Andre and Mike. So Andre and Mike go out to look for Kong and it's the classic uh, group chat panic where everyone's starts to freak out because not only do they not hear him, which is unusual, but they don't see him running around the yard either. Kong's ran away before, guys. If you're like OG Logang, you know Kong has ran out the gate like three times before uh, we got a fence to stop him. But he's looking like a little adventure dog, so who knows? Maybe he was somewhere in the bushes or somewhere in the trees. But as time went on and they're sending me videos of them looking for Kong, I started to worry a little more. Mind you, I'm at dinner. I'm looking at the, the security cameras, but it's so loud and I can't really see what's going on. I am the one in the group with the level head but um i'm at dinner with my friend and i'm looking around and i start to get a little antsy then i get the call from andre and mike they're like yo you gotta come home we have really bad news the whole thing lasted about 10 to 15 seconds the coyote jumped the fence chased kong around a car and grabbed him actually right here the coyote took kong 
there there's no remains like they straight up abducted him that's what i'm getting from the way that he describes this situation if that's the case why would you leave your tiny pomeranian dog outside unsupervised especially at night if your area is known to have coyotes lurking around i don't know if everybody does this maybe it's just my overprotective nature but i would never leave my dog outside unsupervised even in a fenced in yard especially not at night Animals are unpredictable, even the most well-trained ones. There's too many things they can get into. There's too many wild animals outside that can bring your animal into harm's way. Before we moved, we would get all kinds of animals sneaking into our fence. Where we used to live, little critters would get through our fence and they would not care if people were in the yard or not. They just gave zero one time a raccoon got into the yard, a fenced-in yard by the way, his chubby little butt squeezed through the fence, and Chester tried to square up with him. Because Chester, being a protective dog, is like, you're my territory, I don't want you here. And luckily my fiancé was right there at the time, and uh, he jumped in between them like he was about to break up a middle school fight. And luckily the raccoon was like, okay, I'm out. I'm just gonna scurry away, nobody got hurt. But that's because we're aware of our surroundings. We watch our pets, especially at night when there's other animals lurking around outside. And animals can be unpredictable at times. To just trust that they are going to be okay in any circumstance outside, is really foolish especially if your dog is a lot smaller because chester's a full-grown german shepherd okay he's over 100 pounds this little dog was smaller than my cat probably it really sucks to have situations like kong's story happen and sometimes even when you think you're doing your best they still do happen things like this can happen to anybody but i just can't imagine why you would leave your dog outside unsupervised especially if you live in an area with wild prey driven animals like coyotes. In my opinion, even though this wasn't really anybody's fault, this definitely could have been prevented. Logan had a parrot named Maverick for seven years. He was so attached to this bird that Maverick became a huge part of his entire channel's brand. Again, in 2019, just a few months after Kong's incident, Maverick had also passed away suddenly due to a tragic situation where he was eaten by Logan's new mastiff named Ginger. Now, to be fair, this also happened while Logan was away. This time, he was in Sweden. This seems like it was just a freak accident but as we see more into his life with Ginger, it appears that she was an untrained dog. There's even a clip in his vlog where he's looking at other mistiffs from this breeder and he's talking about how a dog that size could really mess up a coyote. Yo, hey Leo. look at that thing. You see this dog? He's actually pretty dope. If there's one dog that could hunt and kill coyotes, it's that yeah. dog. Yeah, well, the they don't even come in the yard. The coyotes don't even come close? They don't come close. Perfect. Perfect. And another part of the vlog is where his mom, I'm assuming it's his mom, is talking to him about how a dog that big has a lot of responsibilities and it might not be the best idea. In fact, she outright says that it's going to be a bad idea to get this dog. What do you think? I think you're crazy. Yeah, that's, that's true. Man, I don't that's know. That's a big dog. It's a big dog. I'm a big dog. <laughs> yeah, but you don't, you have a pig, you have a small puppy. A pig, a turtle, a oh. parrot. And yeah. some fish. I think it's a lot for the house. The house. And you give her back if it doesn't work out. You had a chance to give Jake back and you didn't, and that didn't work out. That's a face that's you're like about like to just do it. You're just the opposite of what is probably like. <laughs> Yeah, be a f***ing maverick and get it to bed and mask it and all that. I just think it's a bad idea. Okay, hey! You think it's a bad idea? Spencer doesn't seem on board? I'm not gonna do it. Oh my god! When you get a really big dog that has a lot of energy, has a high prey drive, and some dogs have different temperaments than others, you really need to look into how to care for them and what the requirements of just expelling that energy and training them and everything else is. Sometime after this incident occurred, Logan sent Ginger to a training facility. Four months later, he came to the facility to visit her and asked one of the women there if she's still a bad dog. Is she getting any better? 
Or is she just still a bad dog? She's not gonna be good in the structure that you have her at home. That's all. She's not a bad dog. I find this to be really upsetting because he puts all of the blame on the dog when he should have been the one to look into this breed more before getting one and listening to the advice of people around him. Like this lady is literally trying to explain to you that she can be a good dog, she just needs a different environment and more care. Ginger stayed at this facility until 2021 when she was adopted by somebody else and now seems to be living in a pretty happy and loving home. And now here's the thing, I don't think Logan was completely heartless and just didn't like the dog or hated the dog or wanted this to happen. I think he really did love the dog, I do think that he really likes animals, I just don't think he's responsible enough to take care of a dog like that and I think he's really impulsive, sees a cute giant dog, thinks that it's going to be completely fine and that's really irresponsible. This isn't the only dog he's rehomed though. Logan had another dog named Broly. He was actually a puppy when he had gotten Ginger. Broly was a husky. A husky. Listen, I love huskies. I think they're adorable, but they are a lot of work. They're very energetic dogs and they require a particular lifestyle and a particular person that's going to care for their needs and not just somebody who's just going to get animals and at the earliest convenience be like, eh, this dog's too much for me. And it's not to say that they're bad dogs. It's just to say that they need a certain level of attention and they shouldn't really be owned by people who are just going to turn away at the earliest convenience because they're not acting appropriately like the other dog. But apparently the reason why Logan got rid of Broly and gave him to a friend is because he was moving to Puerto Rico and he apparently couldn't take Broly with him. There are other animals that Logan has rehomed before moving to Puerto Rico, including two horses, which he sent to his father's ranch, which just so you're clear, is not the same place he sent the two pigs. He also had a turtle named Pancake, who he gave back to the person he got it from when he moved, and he also got rid of his African gray parrot named Sir before moving. However, I do believe Sir is back in Logan's possession after his friend had taken him to Puerto Rico to reunite them. If his friend could take this bird that Logan apparently couldn't and bring the bird to Puerto Rico for Logan, why couldn't Logan do that himself? Why was Logan saying that he couldn't take the bird with him to Puerto Rico? Why couldn't he do this from the start if he really wanted to keep this parrot and he was really attached to it? Why couldn't he have his friend do this from the start? If you want more information on all of the animals that Logan has rehomed prior to moving to Puerto Rico, a YouTuber named Sid did an excellent job on covering pretty much all of the animals Logan has had up until about a year ago. His video will be linked in the description below. Logan Paul had a koi pond filled with fish and in one of the vlogs he found out that one of the fish was dying. What would make you think that treating an animal of any kind like this is okay? Yeah, and some people might say, oh, well, it's just a fish. This is just really disrespectful and morbid in my opinion. It's just, it's really, why would you do something like that? It's in its last moments of life and it's being treated like a spoon holding food that's being airplane fed to a child. And in the same video, he showed some dead rats. Not blurred out or anything either, by the way, in the original video. And just for funsies, he decided to tase them. A lot of people will say, oh, well, it's just a rat. A lot of people exterminate mice and rats and it was already deceased, so it's it's not like he was torturing it and bringing it pain as it was alive. The thing to me is it just comes off really unsettling and I just don't know why somebody would find humor in this. It just seems really weird to me and I just feel uncomfortable watching that. Now, I have heard of creators comparing him to a serial killer because serial killers start out by harming and killing animals. I wouldn't go as far to say something like that, but I do think what he did with these animals was really disrespectful, really, really wrong. But something I find even more upsetting is when another tragedy struck. One of his friends had a dog named Aria who passed away during surgery. Totally out of anyone's control, by the way. This situation sucks really, really bad. Something really similar happened to a family member of mine two summers ago, and when this happens, it's completely out of your control and it's gut-wrenching. You're doing what the vet is telling you to do. So you're trying to make sure that you're giving your pet the best quality of life by putting it in a procedure that could ultimately save or improve its life, and sometimes things still happen 
situation and things can go wrong. Surgeries, unfortunately, can end up this way for not just animals, but people too. It's really, really sad. And to this day, I still get anxiety over this. Not to take this into a different direction, but Chester has to get a procedure done at the end of the month. Completely routine. He's totally fine. He just needs to get a cleaning. Around his age, it's recommended to, you know, take him in for a cleaning, get his teeth checked, make sure that they're still healthy. And they have to knock him out for that. And that is just scary. Uh, it's, it's a scary thought. So I don't blame anybody in this situation at all for this happening. I just want to make that clear. I don't think that this is anybody's fault. I think that everybody involved in this situation was being the most responsible that they could be. I don't want to share too much of this video because his friend seemed really torn up about this and I don't blame him at all. You could tell he was crushed over this too. So why does this piss me off? Because you'd think that Logan would put the damn camera down for five seconds to console his friend. That's what any normal person would do, right? Hey guys, I'm filming a vlog. Oh, my friend friends calling me and they're upset. No, of course I'm not going to turn the camera off and calm them down. Every tear that streams down their face is content for me. And you think it might be a stretch that he's milking his friend's grief for views? Take a look at this. What I would normally call in a typical family vlogger fashion, he uses this picture for his thumbnail and the video is called Evan's Dog Died. Tell me that's not something that you would see on a family vlogging channel. This is supposed to be your friend. It kind of reminds me of that family vlogging video where the mom was recording her kid crying over their sick dog, except for in this situation, the friend involved was an adult. But it just, it just seems so messed up. Logan Paul did actually make a statement on TMZ about Pearl the pig and about the criticism for the way he rehomes his animals. Was she irresponsibly rehomed by me? Absolutely not. She was put in an amazing horse ranch where she lived an amazing life for 10 months. When that homeowner relocated, the pig sw swiped hands again. It was something that I didn't know was taking place. And apparently that farmer called the gentle farm to come pick her up. I'm just gonna do everything I can to continue being a good person and making the situations right. This was unpredictable. This was unforeseen. And I wish I could have gone back in time and told the past version of myself to not get a pig because I'd be moving to an island in two and a half. Just because you love animals does not mean that you should always have them, especially when it's outside of your ability to care for, such as this pig who he thought would stay this big forever but ended up growing to be over 150 pounds. There's lots of animals that I love that would love to be in the presence of. I really wanted to say tigers at first, but there's already been a situation with tigers. Get out of here, you bitch! Just because you love a particular exotic animal doesn't mean you should necessarily own that animal because not everybody has the means or the environment to take care of them. And if you are in an environment that you don't even think you're going to be in for very long, such as planning to move to Puerto Rico in a year after getting pigs, maybe instead of getting an exotic pet to live with, to keep and make the commitment of handling, you should volunteer here somewhere that might be working with different kind of animals where you can see them and learn how to take care of them and then maybe then you can make it your goal to have some sort of facility later in life where you know more about the animal and then you can care for them properly instead of just getting a pig without researching how big it's actually gonna get regardless of the situation just be more responsible and think about how this could not only impact you, but the animals that you are taking care of. Because a lot of animals form close bonds and relationships with their owners, while sometimes making the decision to rehome them is the most responsible thing you can do in a specific circumstance, you also have to consider the fact that it will end up impacting that animal. When it comes to Logan Paul and the way he treats his animals when he has them, I don't think he's as bad as people like Brooke Houts, who we have talked about on this channel a long time ago, or uh, people like that girl that owns the dog Maddie the Chihuahua, who purposefully antagonizes the dog for views on TikTok. I think when he has the animals in his possession, he really does care for them, at least from what we see in his vlogs. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
we don't know what happens when the cameras aren't on but I do think that he is impulsive when he gets these animals and I think that he's irresponsible in a lot of circumstances yes he was away when certain things happened to his pets but there were so many things that could have been done to prevent that from ever even happening such as providing more training and making sure that you're not leaving your dog outside when there's coyotes lurking at night and making sure that the people who are watching your dog know not to do that and again to anybody out there who's ever had to rehome their pets I understand that could be a really really tough circumstance I've had family members that have had to rehome their pets in fact shadow the cat that I have he was actually rehomed to us because of a family member who could no longer take care for him they were in a really really dire situation we took him in he is now in a loving happy happy environment things happen even to the best pet owners but in this circumstance in my opinion it doesn't seem like these are just things that happen out of nowhere i think a lot of these situations could have been prevented or at the very least could have just been handled better but it's okay guys because none of this is actually logan paul's responsibility but to Mimi, why would you say something like that after making an entire video on it? Well, you see, according to Logan himself, it's all the Matrix's fault. In 2023, all you have to do is blame everything on the Matrix. What are your thoughts on this situation? Please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much if you've made it all the way to the end of this video. And thank you so much to everybody who has been supporting me over on Patreon. If you are new to my channel, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so that way you don't miss a single upload from this channel. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate you all. And with that being said, I will see you in the next video.